Hello everyone, it's Jennifer and thank you for joining me today. I am going to be working with the Double Fire Polished Beads of the Month Club Sugared Plums and this is from Adornable Elements. This is a monthly subscription and if you want to see the uh, full contents in there in its entirety, I will put a link in the description below for the unboxing of this uh, box as well as the companion packs. There's two different companion packs. You're going to have options for a crystals companion pack and also to a findings companion pack, which we are going to be using some of the findings from the companions pack today, as well as we are going to be using some ear wires from the companions, the findings companion pack from last month. I think it was last month. Might have been the month before. So we're going to go ahead and use those as well. So that's why these are great. The companion packs are great because you might not use them this month. You might not use them next month, but you might use them the month after that. And I loved having this already in my stash ready to go. Then we also have some findings or some crystals that we'll never, ever see any um project at all. These are some Swarovski. These are Swarovski. I believe they're Swarovski. Might not be. But these are some light Colorado Topaz Shimmer Rondelles, six millimeters. We got these a few months ago. And I was talking with Tina over at Adornable and I said, those beads will never, ever be used. I used all the other beads from that Crystal Companion Pack, but I did not use those and never will. So they stay nice and tidy. I haven't been able to find them and they were right where I left them. So also what we're going to be using is we are going to be using some Metallics Soft Flex. This is a Metallic Flex wire in medium size, and this is from Soft Flex Company. We're also going to be using some of their craft wire in antique copper, some 20 gauge. We're going to be using some of their crimp tubes, and we are also going to be using one of their, they have these twi twisted textured antique brass. This is antique brass, but for me, it felt more on the copper side. So I'm going to go ahead and use these. These are closed, so I am going to use them in the necklace. All right. So the first thing, so I have four projects here, four projects using the box. And one project here, I don't have it completely figured out yet. So this is going to be the last one. It's just going to be a simple, uh, a simple bracelet. Then I have some chain. And I think this chain might have come from Beadbox Bargains or Bargain Beadbox. Um, it might have been in one of the boxes or in another order. And then I have a an antique copper uh lobster clasp and I haven't cut them yet. These actually have open links and so when I figure out how long I want them, we're gonna use part of it for here and then we use part of it for here. Then we're gonna use some of these gorgeous, gorgeous rose beads. These are rosebud beads, I believe that's what they're called. Um, yes, rosebud. This is a light sapphire luster rosebud. We're going to also be using some of these four millimeter. These are indigo, indigo orchid. We're going to be using some of those as well as some of these little Tierra cast spacers that were also included in the companions pack. And what I did was I just did some wire wrapping and I look here and I see that my little tail probably is not tucked in as much as it should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, all right, so we're gonna do some wire wrapping. We are also going to use one of the head pins from the Companions Pack. We're also going to be using some of those oval jump rings from the Companions Pack. All right, so, oh, and we're also going to be using this pendant. All of these little components were in the Companions Pack. The only thing not was a chain, this, uh, this closed jump ring, and the wire that we're going to be using. 
and I did attach it to the to a jump ring just to give it a little bit more flow. I did not attach it down here to the bottom. So what I'm hoping is when I add my jump ring, my jump ring can hopefully maybe grab that and hold it correctly. I mean, it will be on your neck, but just hoping. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do, this is gonna be on the bottom. Okay. And then we're gonna make two components here. So we're gonna need those. We don't need the jump rings yet. So for each one, we're gonna need that. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and add. I'm mean, again, I am using some anti copper 20 gauge. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to kind of work from the spool a little bit. I will cut when I get to the other side and just be careful with these because this is 20 gauge and you just have to make sure your little spacers go through there. I almost used 20, uh, eight, uh, 22 gauge but then I once I kind of bossed it around a little bit then I was able to get that through and I bossed it around enough and I got the bossing around from Kelly Sutton at Kelly's Bee Boutique and um yeah usually it's about wire but I'm gonna boss around my little beads there Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a wire wrap loop and we are going to come down probably about an inch, inch and a half. This is 20 gauge, so it's a little thicker. We're gonna bring in, oh, I'm gonna use some cutters, uh, some round nose pliers and chain nose pliers. And then for my jump rings, I have some bent nose pliers. Let's go ahead and come in here and just get that right up against that angle there. Form it over your barrel, then twist, and then push to the back. And then when I do that, I need to get that a little bit centered. And I have this. And now what I need to do is get this wire and wrap it around the neck there. So I'm gonna do that by locking that in place. Oh, I guess I use these too. I'm gonna use my bent nose pliers and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that around. Now I'm holding on to just that loop, not where my wires meet. And I'm gonna wrap it around three times. Once, twice, and then we're gonna go around one more time. Okay, then I'm gonna push that in. I'm gonna bring this to the bottom. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut about that inch and a half about. And no, I didn't cut that off yet because I like to have the bead up against something or the wire up against something when I tuck in that tail. Okay, I'm gonna come in. I'm not gonna go with the tippy tip. I'm gonna come a little bit off the tippy tip, just a little bit, a little bit more than that. So I'm gonna come a little bit off the tippy tip. If this was 22 gauge, I would be at the tippy tip. And then I'm gonna come in about the same place and you can mark it. So I have little markings here. So I go about halfway in between. I'm gonna form that over. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my wrist. I'm gonna push that to the back and then get that centered. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my the tip of my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna lock that in place. And then I'm gonna come in and wrap around, yes, you guessed it, three times. Get this push back down. And we're gonna wrap around three times. So now I'm gonna go ahead and come in and I'm gonna cut that one there cover that up so it doesn't go flying. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cover that. Then I'm going to come in with my bent nose pliers because it's just easier to hold. And then I'm gonna tuck that in. Now, if I were to tuck that in without the beads being there, 
I always get it all distorted and and crooked and everything. So I just go ahead and if I know that I'm going to have some bead there, I'll go ahead and just add that on. Then that doesn't look too centered. So let's just put that back in there and center that up. And then when you look, it's not really, it's, this is a little crooked. So go ahead and just grab your chain nose pliers, grab your bent nose pliers, and then just get them all nice and evened up. And there we go. There's one. Let's go ahead and get the second one done. So I'm going to go ahead and speed things up a little bit. It only goes twice as fast um, on iMovie. At least that's how I can get it to only go twice as fast. But I'm also cutting a bunch of pieces out. So you'll see it'd be, it'd be a little bit choppy here and there. But I didn't want the video to be too long. And this was my way to shorten it up just a little bit because we do have four projects to get through. And so excited how this is going to turn out. Love the colors. The these blues with the antique copper just looks absolutely stunning. So here we are back to normal okay, speed. So now what I want to do is I want to add my jump ring. I might have to grab another jump ring so that the orientation is right for the, and I might just go ahead and add another jump ring to the pendant. So I don't want to mess with the orientation being off. Okay, so here we have our little components here. And I'm probably I'm gonna go ahead and add two. And I don't know if I'm gonna make it like that. And have two drop down or have the two I don't want the two jump rings in there. I'd rather add a little bit of length. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of length. So I'm going to open up these amazing oval jump rings. And we are going to, so that's going that way. And that's going that way. Perfect. I love these oval jump rings from TR Cast. Oh, and I do have oval jump rings in my Etsy shop. Oops. And they are amazing. I have some uh, four by threes. I have some four by threes and I have uh, some, I think I have a few left of the five five millimeter now is there a front or back now these are double-sided so if you're looking for some amazing jump rings and if you did not get into this companion pack you're going to want to have some of them because they are amazing okay yeah no i like adding that extra jump ring okay all right so now what we're going to do you know what i might do though that's all right. Okay. So we have that. Then I, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I will just attach this to the component. And what we're going to do is we are going to do the same pattern using the head pin, the rosebud bead with our fire polish and the little spacers in between. we go so then we're gonna have that okay so we're gonna go ahead and come in and give that 90 degree angle bend we're gonna come in about halfway and, and when I say halfway I mean halfway in between that little mark and the tip okay and then we're gonna form that over and then push to the back Okay, so I have that and now what I want to do is go ahead and pass that through the component here before I wrap it up okay and this 
part is going to be the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get that closed up. Get my chain nose pliers, the tip over that. I'm gonna start it and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it around three times. Two, three. Oh, did I? One, two, there's three. Oh wow, I don't think I left enough room. Wow, nope, I got it. And I'll get it. I'll get it tucked in there. I must have been more at the tippy tip than what I thought. So now I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and then just very carefully get that tucked in. Good, okay. So here we have the piece of our necklace. There we go. All right, so now what we do have is we have, do I have more? Oh, maybe I lost one. But you can either use the jump rings or you can open up the links. <clears throat> I wanna use the jump rings. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna see how long I need to make this. See, let me see how long this is. This is about five inches. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, I already have this connected over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect my chain, the other end of the chain, so then I can see where I'm, how long I want this. I'm gonna go ahead and add the jump ring. And the dump, jump ring does make it flow a lot better. Let's see if I can get there. There we go. Okay. And get that all nice and closed up. And you can hear it lock in place. So let me check to see how long I need this and I'll be right back. So this is right at five and a half inches. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open this one link. I'm gonna open this one up. Okay, slide this off. Okay. Then I'm gonna slide on my lobster clasp. Let's have it go. I guess it probably doesn't matter which way. Oops. Let's go ahead and get that on there. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get this on here. And then we're gonna close it back up. Okay, and these are itty bitty links, but they it works. I've used this. There, I just forced it in. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna make that the same length. So, there we go there. And let's see, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and open up, we'll open up this link. and open it up and pull that off. And so you can very easily just open the links and have them have them attached directly to the necklace, but I kind of like the flow of these um, oval jump rings. I just feel like it adds a lot of extra flow And then let's make sure we're not going to be all twisted. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because we can untwist it with the, with the chain. Okay. There we go. And there we have it. 
So here we have our first little necklace and I love it. I was wanting something that had a little bit of droop and I wanted to use this pendant and that was just absolutely perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I used, it was about five and a half inches of, it was about five and a half inches of chain. So there's our first project. All right, so now let's go ahead and bring in, we have a couple other projects. And if this looks familiar, yes, because I want some matching earrings. And all I did was, oh, I need another jump ring. Oh, that's where that extra jump ring probably came from. All right, so let me see, do I have another one? Oh, I don't. Oh, wait, I do. I've used up all my jump rings. Okay. Then we're also going to use, this is from the crystals, crystal findings pack, are these little wavy beads and these bicones. We're going to use those. And again, this is what I pulled from the companions pack from another month. We're going to make a simple loop. And then we're also going to use a jump ring and then some chain. And I have some of this chain. I got this chain in as a variety pack and it's John Bead brand. I think I got this from Michaels or Amazon. No, Michaels. I think it was Michaels. And then what we're gonna do is we need some shiny silver. And I have some shiny silver 20 gauge wire uh, from Softlex and also too with the, I don't know why I have those two extras out. Also too with the, with the companions pack, the uh, adornable, they included the earring backs. So I still have another pair of ear wires in here. Oh, wait, these are for, these are for the other earrings. I need to get with it. My dog is tiptoeing around because it's time for him to eat. But I keep on stopping my recording to do other stuff and I'm not getting recording done. So we're gonna put this project off to the side and we're gonna just go ahead and make our components here. Very simple, easy pair of earrings using those succulent earring posts, also tiara cast, and then holding them together with a, a jump ring and it just adds a little bit of length and it adds a little bit of flow. So we are going to do the same thing we did for the focal in our pendant that we used, our connector. And then we're gonna go ahead and do this and I have to remember to, oh, so pretty, to remember to come down just a hair I'm gonna come down just a hair, give it that 90 degree angle bend, and then I come in about halfway between that mark and the tip, hold on to that, push it to the back, and then get it centered. And then we're gonna come in with our chain nose pliers, come in, and we are going to start wrapping once, twice, and three times. And I did, I gave it a little bit more room this time. So I'm not forcing it in there. We're gonna come in with our cutters, trim that off. I'm going to go ahead and hold that and then just tuck in that tail there. Then what I'm gonna do is, see I'm a little bit off-centered. Little, just a little. So I'm just gonna bring that up just a little bit. Go ahead and open this up. Add my component, add my ear wire, and I was probably completely off camera. And then get this closed off 
and you can hear that lock in place. Wonderful tear cast uh, jump rings. All right, so now we have our pair of earrings that goes with our new necklace. Pretty, huh? And I thought of doing this same thing for a bracelet. And I probably will off camera, but the bracelet I'm making isn't the same. All right, so now I have to remember how I did this. All right, so I think I used the stepper. I used the stepper-ish. When I say stepper, I use the six stepper-ish. And I say that because I did use it on the bottom and then at the top, because I'm not really good at doing that. Um, it, I ended up kind of fudging it through. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this bead and I want this to be the front. So then the front on this side, or does it even matter? Yeah, it does. So we want it to mirror. I'm gonna have mine mirror. You don't have to if you don't want to. Some people prefer not mirroring and that's okay too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna add my chain. And my chain is just maybe eight links, I think. We will go ahead and do that. I put these together a few weeks ago, and so I can't remember how many links, but I feel like there's like eight. Two, four, six, eight. Yep, there's eight links of this chain. Okay. And I want the chain to sit right so that when I add my, my bead there, which I don't even think it really matters, but we'll just see. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I want to add my bead, because we're gonna work from the spool. I want a flush cut, and then we're gonna come in, and I used the smallest, the smallest barrel on this one. And I'm just gonna twist around until it meets the other side. I think this is the size. Yes. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my chain nose pliers, the very, very tippy tip, and then just bend it up to make it look more like an eye pin. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and add my chain, because it's easier to add the chain. It's easier to add when you have an eye pen when it's all put together. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, so that's how it's gonna go. Then what we're gonna do is you can see here I have the direction going opposite. So we are going to have that, and then we're gonna have it going opposite direction. So this, so this loop is going front to back, right? I need the top loop to go side to side. So let's just go ahead and take our wire Okay, so we're just going to take our wire and just bend it. Then, I think it's a quarter of an inch, but I, I can't remember. It might be half an inch and I cut a little bit of it. I honestly cannot remember. So we will just see. Well, oh man, that's really small. That's not going to even be close. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this like so, because that's not even close, I don't think. Again, I did these a while ago. Lots happened in between. We had Christmas, and uh, my mother-in-law lost her battle with cancer. So we've had that going on as well and uh yeah it's just it's just been absolutely tough all right so now this ear wire is open but 
I try not to open up the air wires. I will try to open up my trusted, my trusted, if I open the right side, my trusted craft wire. And it is going to go like that. And it's gonna go this way. And then I'm gonna close that up. And there we have our next pair of earrings. So by the time you see this video, it's probably gonna be these are New Year's videos, or New Year's earrings. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the back that Adornable so graciously will include. And let's get these going the right way. And there's our second pair of earrings. Now we're just going to go ahead and make our bracelet. Our bracelet is going to include those four millimeter fire polish, but we are also going to be using these. These are, I think these are the PR06. Yep, that is the Twilight Light Sapphire Round. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. And you can see that there's a little bit of a, of a hint of copper brass, just a hint of color in that as well. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use some beading wire. I don't need those. I will need these maybe. And I can very easily, I can very easily um, not have a jump ring to attach those two just because also too if you're going to use a wire where you're going to have just the wire with the jump ring the oval is what you want because then the oval jump ring is slit the slit is in the center so typically when you're wearing something it's going to pull to the right or left of it and you're not going to worry about your you won't have to worry about your wire coming through the slit. However, though, also too, these, this medium metallic flex wire is a, it's strong. It's tested at 26 pounds. It's 49 strands and has this gorgeous copper color coating on, um, over it. So this is really well protected. I do normally use wire guardians with these, but for this, I don't think I'm going to need any wire guardians. I'm I'm perfectly content with just having with just having my um with just having the wire. Okay. All right. Then I like to work from the spool. So we are going to work from the spool. Let me see where it's coming out of. There it is. I will have a link to Softlex Company also in the description. And I want my I need my bracelet to end on the smaller bead because if I have this going through, which you can very easily test out, just go ahead and add your copper, add your bar, and just kind of do this a little bit here and just do a little bit of testing. It doesn't hurt to test. Go ahead and test it out. And what I mean by is to see if it will work without the jump ring. Now I will tell you the copper, the copper two by two crimp tubes must be a little thicker or it's just because I'm using the metallics, but I always struggle with getting that second strand in, but it goes in perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and I don't know if that will pass through. So let's just go ahead and pull this down just a little bit more because I want to make sure that when I am passing this through, right, that this is all going to be down here, that this will go through okay. And it will because the bead, the bead, I'm going to push this down just a little bit more, see if I can get it true to how it's going to go. The bead is small enough to fit through there. Now that six millimeter, probably not so much. 
So that's why I'm going to end on that bead there. And all I'm gonna do is rotate or switch off and I'm gonna go small, six, four, and then six, and I'm not sure how I'm gonna need. The good thing about doing it this way too is that if you get to a point with your pattern and you're in the middle of, oh man, this one's too short, this one's too long, these beads are not, you know, this one's six millimeters, the other one's four millimeters. You're not going to run into too much of an issue with it being to where it's either too tight or too long or too large, at least in my experience with making these. All right, so I'm just going to keep on going back and forth. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Adornable Elements and the Beads of the Month Club. They have several different options for Beads of the Month Club. Not only do they have this fire polish, this one's a double fire polish, but they also have single. They also have gemstone and double gemstone. They also have seed beads. They have hot and trendy beads. They, you name it, they've got it. And so be sure to check out their website. There, and I cannot say enough about their customer service. Their customer service is top notch. And just email them. I, by the time you see this, it's probably gonna be late in December. And you can still email them and see if they have any of these left over. See if they do. And also too, if you are not a subscriber, use Bella 10. And Bella 10, that is a coupon that can get you 10% off of your first month subscription. Cannot believe I was leaving that out. Okay, so that I know is not enough yet. Bring out my fandy dandy tool. And I need to go a little bit larger than I normally would just because so I probably need another three, three larges sections. So let's go one. two let me just check it now and see because it has to be a little bit bigger than your wrist because if you're going to get the toggle on there oh yeah I need one more section and then uh, that will be fine for me okay and there we go okay so now, and I work from the spool just to kind of minimize waste. As you can tell, I don't eliminate waste because I didn't work completely from the spool on the wire, but I do reduce it. I feel like I, I reduce my waste. Okay, and then I just want to make a quick glance and make sure that every other bead, and it is. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Add this and it's always easier on this other side because I don't have to have the beads right next to me or right next to the where I'm going to be crimping okay so this one was really easy to go through so it's probably just me um, and my angle now I do want room for it to move around I don't want it to be so tight but I also don't want it to move around so much. All right, so now let's go ahead and grab our magical crimping pliers. These are also available at softflex.com, softflexcompany.com. And as you can see, these just have one well. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add this right into the center there and give it a squeeze. And when I do that, I form like a little uh, square. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in go on the side, make sure it's right there in the middle, and then just continue going around until I feel no tension, and I still feel some tension. And when you feel no tension, then you know that you're all done, and you have, look at that, that gorgeous, 
bead-like finish. Isn't that gorgeous? Give it the tug test. It's not going anywhere. Then let's go ahead and come in as close as we can down to that crimp. All right. If you struggle with the crimping pliers, you can always add a third wire. For these copper, for these copper crimp tubes, you might have to add more like a like a um, maybe a thin, a thinner one of the fine or ultra fine, and sometimes just by packing it in with a little something more. I used to do that. I used to add a third wire because I felt like it helped me with the crimping until I got comfortable, until I became comfortable with the crimping pliers, okay? So now let's go ahead and pass that back through. As you can see, I have a huge, that my nail is just slit there because I always use that thumbnail for tug testing, for doing what I'm doing right now. Both nails usually are bad. That's why this one is, a little, this one's a little chopped up too. So now I'm just gonna bring down and just, sometimes I just grab my, there we go. And again, I don't want it too loose. So what I do is I do this here. So I get them and let's try and get them at least the same size loop. I think it's crossed. Let's at least try to get this about the same size loop. Let's grab Again, I'm making this much harder than what it is because I have a camera sitting here. So now let's get that. And that looks like about right. Then I want it to be loose, but I don't want extra wire showing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it up just a little bit and bring this down just a little bit. I cannot pull it with my finger. There we go. All right, so there we go there. So now we have it exactly where we want it, okay? Now, now that I have my tension, like I know that it's loose, it's not all tight, it gives me a little bit more room. So you see how I have just a little bit more room now to work with when I open this all up? And so now I'm gonna take advantage of that room so I can get my magical crimper in there and give it a squeeze and it just I, it just gives me a little bit more room. So I will go in and tighten it all up, but then I open it up to do the crimping. Okay, and it looks like that is good. Then come in as close as you can. I like to go through the bead because then I don't have a piece sticking out but it's, it's okay. Sometimes you can't go through the bead. So here we go. And then now we know, see how we have that extra room? Since we have the small bead, I guess it would have gone through that bead too, but just, just to be safe. And there you have it. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. And you look, I didn't use crimp covers. There's no crimp covers. That air, that's the two by two crimp tubes and they look just like a bead. Isn't that pretty? So we have our bracelet. We have some extras so let's push this over to the side here is our waist for the day um there we go there's our waist for the day and here are our earrings so we have our earrings we have our other pair of earrings And we have our necklace. We have our little earring backs too. And then we have our little necklace. And there you are. Thank you so much for watching and sticking it out. I think this was a long, a long video, but I wanted to make sure to get all these pieces made for you rather than doing them off camera. 
Also, to be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you like it. Go visit Adornable Elements for Beads of the Month Club. Check out Softflex Company for their beading wire and crimp tubes and all their other goodies that I had, graft wire, and oh, I should put it straight up and down, and comment. I love to see what everybody has to say, and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.